Hi, welcome back to another video with Danny Cheek about finance and economics. Um, this one is going to be explaining what quantitative easing is um, through the Federal Reserve. Um, and we'll start with just a brief introduction. So what is it? It's a non-traditional monetary policy tool used by the Federal Reserve Bank in extreme crises and recessions. The goal of it is to boost inflation, liquidity, and confidence um, within financial markets. Um, the, fi the Federal Reserve creates loans to buy treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities from the financial markets and allows for banks to loan money elsewhere and uh, not have it tied up in low-risk bonds or mortgage-backed securities. So it basically just allows for more liquidity and for banks to use money elsewhere and riskier things other than just bonds or mortgage-backed securities. So the benefits of QE... Um, it greatly improves the liquidity in markets, as we can see during the 2020 recession, uh, as indicated by shade, the shading in gray. It shows that bank credit for uh, loans has certainly increased as the implementation of QE um, happened in March. Um, there's a large boost there. And even in the 2008 recession, we see a little bit of a boost during the recession when they started doing the specific rounds. And then when they stopped doing them, liquidity would fall. The treasury bond market, it's meant to kind of lower and make bonds less attractive. So looking at the current 10-year bond yield, it's pretty low, all things considering, because the Fed is purchasing it all, making it less attractive. So, and so banks are trying to loan it out to something that will pay more than a 10-year treasury bond, like mortgages or equities or personal loans, whatever it may be. But they're trying to get the money out of there so that they can get a higher return. So it forces them to move the money elsewhere and allow for more people to take advantage of the loans. So total loans, this is of as of uh, second quarter data. So we can see a huge jump in loans, all from the QE in 2020. Um, so that sheer amount of loans has jumped as more people want to refinance take more loans out to invest in equities because the equity market is doing better or whatever. Um, but it's really helping people get money out and build and expand and ha have the economy leave the trough of the recession and enter back into expansion. So economic growth, um, it really, QE is a big uh, helper to economic growth. It reduces interest rates, increases the money supply, drives more lending to consumers and businesses, and it artificially drives inflation over the 2% marker, which is the Fed's target, if it's not hitting it. Um, and before in 2020, it was not. So with that QE and more loans and everything, more money out there, things costing more, that drives up inflation, and that is helpful as long as it doesn't continue for prolonged periods. So some risks of QE, and there's a lot, and there's a lot of reasons why people don't like it. Here are a couple of them. Asset bubbles are probably the biggest one. So too much QE can create asset bubbles within financial markets. So that's the housing market, stock market. Um, currently, both the housing market and the financial market are, you know, an all-time record high um, in terms of sales on the housing market and equity prices on the stock market. Um, and they've done fantastic in the last year with QE. Um, just look at any portfolio. It's done fantastic. The S&P has, has had a fantastic year um, since they started in March of 2020. Um, bond yields moved lower, which makes risk assets more attractive for banks to try to provide with the extra liquidity that they get through the QE process. So they get more money to loan out because they don't want to be putting it in these um, low returning bonds because the Fed kind of takes that out of the equation by purchasing so many of them at such a low rate. And that really helps move money back into the economy. So looking at the housing market, we can really see, um, especially in the fourth round of QE um, that we've seen in the last 20 years, um, and starting in 2020, that this huge jump in house sales and home prices has really been a factor. Um, that could be due to people wanting to take advantage of the low mortgage rate. Um, 
you know, 30 years, about 2.25, which is at its absolute lowest. So it's a great time to buy a house because you can get a very cheap mortgage. So a lot of people are doing that. People are moving because of the pandemic. Drives house sales up. Um, it's really just affecting the the only the only downside is that renters are actually have better rates now because less people want to live in the city, more people want to live in the suburbs, and there's more houses in the suburbs than there are in the city to buy. Um, so that's why we see a huge jump with the QE, especially since mortgage-backed securities are one of the biggest things the Fed's buying at 40 billion a month right now. Um, the other one being 80 billion in treasuries a month. So for a total of $120 billion a month in QE right now, but that really makes mortgage rates low when the Q, when the Fed is buying all those mortgage-backed securities. So the consumer wants to get in and try to buy a home now because it's great for, and makes great financial sense to have a low interest rate. Um, but there's also another risk that it devaluates the US dollar. So you can see during all the highlighted um, blue periods of QE, including the ones from the 2008 recession, that the US dollar tends to go down. And that is great if it's uh, for domestic purposes, but for international trade, other countries won't want to accept paper that's worthless if the QE is making the dollar worth less. So it, hurt, it hurts uh, international trade and actually can really stop exports from even coming to the United States until QE is over. In 2010, China said that they would stop exporting rare, rare earth elements to the United States because of QE, because they didn't want a worthless dollar for a commodity that would hold its value. And so they had to wait until the round of QE in 2010 was over, and then they started slowly bringing those back. But we can see definitely in the 2020 QE that the US dollar has really lost a lot in terms of the index value, um, just because it means there's more money out there. So the dollar you have isn't worth as much if there's more money out there. Um, and then just a little bit of what QE has done in the past. It's only been used really once before in, in 2008. It's a relatively new new tool. So just the timeline, the first round of QE was in 2008 with an initial $600 billion that they were going to do of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, but it ended up being about $1.25 just because of the sheer amount of toxic mortgage-backed securities that needed to be purchased to save the banks. And then in 2011, they started another round because the recession was so bad that it was still leaving scars. So they did another 600 round of QE, but it spiked hyperinflation fears, something so new. You know, people worried that their dollar was going to be worthless, sending gold and silver to high levels because people were simply afraid that the dollar would lose its value just because of all this money the government was printing. Um, and then in 2013, the third and final round of QE ends when the economic goals were reached. And then what this brings us to is the taper tantrum, which is when the Fed said that they were going to start to taper. And so financial markets said, OK, well, I think it's time to get out of equities and move into bonds, causing bonds to spike to about 2.9 percent from about 1.5. So almost double the return there. So banks flooded into tr into bond markets, causing a, a sharp drop in equity markets and causing money to be more expensive to be loaned out. Um, while it was temporary in the United States, it affected developing countries um, that relied on the price of the 10 year bond being low um, because they wanted the cheap money to be loaned to them and they couldn't afford the high interest rate of the 10 year being at 3% almost. So it really hurt a lot of developing countries, not so much the U.S. in the long term, but it certainly showed that, you know, the financial markets do have an impact on what the Fed does because they ended up waiting until 2014 to actually taper because the taper tantrum was so influential. So it took about three years of tapering to end and, in, and tapering from the 2008 recession ended in 2017. The current round of QE. This is the Fed's balance sheet as of the second quarter of 2021. We can see that it increases during the shaded part of um, QE rounds from the 2008 recession. And then we can see in the fourth round um, that they've done in history in 2020 that the Fed's balance sheet has almost doubled.
in terms of the loans they've created to buy all these bonds. So it's a really dangerous thing because you can't do it forever because it hurts the bond market and the bond market doesn't need to be able to, you know, recover and not just stay at whatever the Fed's buying at, which is around 1.5% for the 10 year. So they eventually you're going to have to start tapering. And that's another thing I'm going to talk about later, um, which is in the news a lot. It's, it's certainly going to affect the stock market. It's going to affect all markets, the housing market, the bond market, you name it, um, because a lot of money has been pumped in. And it means that, you know, maybe there's a little bit of an asset bubble, especially in housing, because housing prices are so high. Equity markets are so high. Maybe we're seeing a correction when the Fed announces they're going to taper. Um, which means that they're just going to decrease the asset purchases that they're already doing at already. So they're at $120 billion a month. So they're going to decrease that by how much? I don't know. Um, I do have an idea and I'll talk about that in my next video. So thank you. And I hope you learned something about what quantitative easing is and how it relates to your daily life.